Hey guys, welcome to the Critical Beauty Salon. So 2019 Miss International Beauty Pageant took place on November 12th at the Tokyo Dome City Hall in Tokyo, Japan. And City Thorn Lia Ramwat of Thailand won, making her the first woman from her country to win the coveted title. Were you just as surprised as I was? To be honest, Thailand was not on my list and I definitely did not expect her to win, especially after listening to her humdrum speech. What is not surprising is the fact that the results every year are hard to predict. A contestant may be considered a major frontrunner at the beginning of the pageant, but her frontrunner status may eventually subside during the remainder of the pageant, perhaps due to lack of energy or that the pageant organizers are disappointed with her behavior, character, and overall performance. In Miss Thailand's case, she just came out of nowhere and crushed the popular and favorite delegates from the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Mexico, Venezuela, and Uganda. The first event was a national costume presentation. Unlike the other major pageants that usually begin with an opening number and lavish choreography, Miss International 2019 pageant opened with the 83 candidates dressed in their national costumes. First, the contestants gathered on stage, swaying to the synthesized music played by a Japanese group positioned on the upper level of the stage. Instead of being presented in alphabetical order, the girls simply paraded individually up to the center of the stage, beginning with the delegates from the Americas. This segment lasted just a little over 15 minutes. I found myself nearly dozing off as the live stream began in my region at midnight I perked up only when Vietnam won the Best National Costume Award. Did you notice that the special awardees are only given a sash? I'm not sure if the awardees receive any cash prize or trophies, but if you do, please comment below. Did you also notice that none of the contestants wore gimmicky and heavy over-the-top costumes that you would usually find in that other pageant which will take place in Atlanta on December 8? In my last vlog, I discussed the four things that I like about Miss International. I meant to follow up with another vlog entitled Four Things That I Hate About Miss International, but I realized that I could only come up with one thing that I hate about the pageant, and that is the dragging and painstakingly slow pace of the production. I don't see any reason why an international pageant should last longer than three hours with commercials included, you couldn't pay me enough money to attend this pageant unless the time is cut in half and the selection of doll music, which sounded like royalty-free music that no one has ever heard of, is upgraded to a more trendy, hip, and syncopated music. The pageant was held at the Tokyo Dome City Hall, a facility for sport, fashion show, circus, and live music located in Tokyo, inside of Tokyo Dome City. The arena has hosted a few Miss International shows in the past. The stage is a basic thrust stage with a wide ramp in front that allows the girls to pose and pivot. On the main floor, in addition to the rectangular tables set for the judges, several round tables have been placed to accommodate the spectators who paid good money to have a good view of the spectacle while sipping sake and nibbling some sushi. Further away in the back of the arena are rows of seats reserved for the non-VIPs that included the families, friends, and supporters of the contestants. The show was co-hosted by Ayako Kisa, a Japanese announcer and TV personality, and by Tetsuya Besho, a Japanese actor and radio presenter who has been hosting the pageant since 2014. Both speak fluent English. Right after the walking competition, Besho tried to raise excitement at the venue by asking the audience, Where are you from? The audience shouted back, Indonesia, Mexico, Philippines. Kylie Versoza, Miss International 2016, played a backstage host who interviewed the top eight finalists. Since the pageant has been held in Japan since 1972, and since it is run by Japanese organizers, it is only logical to create a mostly Japanese judging panel. There were eight Japanese judges and four non-Japanese judges. Co-host Ayako Kisa stated that since arriving in Japan on October 25th, the contestants have been touring Japan for nearly three weeks 
and they had been actively engaging in all kinds of international exchanges and social contribution activities. These contestants were also judged on the intelligence, sophistication, and communication capability they demonstrated during this period. Today's 2019 Miss International will be crowned based on the results from strict examination and points in the national costume, evening gown, and swimsuit competitions. The Japanese judges were these folks. And the non-Japanese judges were these folks. Marian Velasco, the outgoing queen, is introduced and gives a speech that lasted for about five minutes. Before she won, she did not know what being Miss International meant. A year after, she learned that it is about promoting cultural exchanges and comprehension among nations and world peace. The second event was the evening gown competition, which lasted about 11 minutes. With the same monotonous, royalty-free music playing in the background, two girls at a time approached the front of the stage to try winning the judges with their charm, grace, elegance, and poise. I didn't like that a handful of the contestants, and they're all from Africa, Uganda, Equatorial Guinea, and Cote d'Ivoire, waved or blew a kiss to the audience. To me, this is just tacky and should never be done during the evening gown competition. There were many nice gowns. I especially liked those in Philippines, Venezuela, Sri Lanka, and Taiwan. This segment was followed by a 20-minute intermission when the rest of the video montage of the girls' experiences in Japan was shown. At this moment, I was about ready to fall asleep. After the intermission was the swimsuit presentation. The girls wore swimsuits of different colors and styles. There were some in bikinis and some in one piece. The presentation was followed by the announcement of the winner of Best in Swimsuit, Miss Uganda, wearing a bold pink one-piece with a string around the waist. As the girls remain on stage in their swimsuit, the top 15 are called. Co-host Ayako Kisa explains that these finalists were selected based on the collective results of their activities since arriving in Japan, the preliminary screening, and today's competition. I assume the judges at the prelims were the same judges during the finals? Anyway, the top 15 proved to be a great group. Only in Miss International that you will hear the phrase, please come to the center stage, 15 times. Please. Congratulations, please come to center stage. The top 15 then had to compete in walking. I find it odd that it is called a walking competition instead of calling it a runway competition. But when you think of it, there's not much of a runway on that simple stage. Anyway, I thought these girls had amazing catwalk. Venezuela, Hong Kong, Puerto Rico, Colombia, and Indonesia. But I like Puerto Rico's walk the best. That girl was fierce to the max. An artist dressed up as a geisha and accompanied by a league of musicians performs a traditional Japanese dance. This segment lasted for nearly 10 minutes. Even though I found the performance not as exciting as an ordinary citizen singing karaoke, I did appreciate the fact that the organizers stuck to tradition, which is one of the most significant characteristics of the pageant. Now for the second cut of the evening from 83 down to 15, and now from 15 down to the top eight. The 15 semi-finalists returned to the stage wearing different gowns from the ones they had worn at the beginning of the show. The top eight were called in this order. Mexico, Philippines, Colombia, Uganda, who kept doing the screwing the light bulb wave, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, and United Kingdom. Notice that all of them were wearing pastel colored gowns. I was expecting Venezuela to advance instead of Vietnam or Indonesia because I thought her gown was the most attractive and she carried it very well. But I guess it just wasn't her night. The third event was the speech competition. Each of the eight finalists had to deliver a 45 second long speech in which she had to explain the significance of the pageant's theme this year, which is cheer all women. 
all eight speeches were delivered in English and had to be translated into Japanese, a task that prolonged the segment even further to 20 minutes. This segment was probably my least favorite of all segments because not only was it dragging, but the woman interpreter screwed up the flawless speech of Miss Philippines and Miss Indonesia. Miss Uganda's delivery was not as good as the two other girls, but she was saved by the male interpreter who probably enhanced the interpretation in her favor. Miss Thailand's speech was heartfelt and sincere. She stated that she had been criticized for winning Miss Thailand, but that she turned criticism into power to be the best version of herself. She was also lucky to have her speech translated by the male interpreter. While the judges deliberate for another 20 minutes, the co-hosts announce the winners of the Continental Queens who were selected by their colleagues who believe that they best represent their respective continents. I've been doing some research and I found out that the Continental Queens began in 2015. Between that year and 2018, no Miss Photogenic or Miss Friendship Award was distributed. Could it be that the Continental Queen Award has now replaced those two traditional awards? Maybe not, because a Miss Photogenic Award was given to Miss Guadalupe this year. Two new awards, Best Dresser and Best Body, were introduced in 2014 and distributed until 2018, but neither award was presented this year. This inconsistency in the distribution of awards is just driving me crazy. Anyway, here are the winners of the Continental Queen Awards. While the judges spend another 10 minutes deliberating, the co-hosts engage in small talk in Japanese. Then, special awards were distributed. Best in Evening Gown to Miss Venezuela and Miss Photogenic to Miss Guadalupe. Co-host Tetsuya Besho explains that the Miss Photogenic Award goes to the contestant who is the most successful in sharing the fun and the glamour of the Miss International Contest through social media during her stay in Japan. The co-hosts announce the top five in ascending order, beginning with fourth runner-up, United Kingdom, followed by third runner-up, Colombia, second runner-up, Uganda, and first runner-up, Mexico, whom many fans had as their favorite for the crown. Another 10 minutes were spent in sashing and crowning the runners-up. At this moment, only four finalists remain on stage, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Thailand, all from Southeast Asia. When Thailand was eventually proclaimed the winner, she was in shock and certainly caught by surprise. Compared to Miriam Velasco's coronation last year, which was orderly and time-consuming, Siri Thorne's coronation was messy as the girls quickly huddled around her to congratulate her, which suggests that she is well-liked by everyone. Co-host Ayako Kisa, in her genteel manner, politely asked the girls to return to their positions for the coronation ceremony. After the ceremony, Siri Thorne gave a heartfelt speech thanking everyone who helped her to her victory. I think she deserves her win, and I'm happy that Thailand has won its first Miss International crown since it began competing in 1968. Next year, the pageant will celebrate its 60th anniversary, and I'm entertaining the possibility of attending it just to see how it's really like. I've been to Miss Universe, Miss World, and Miss Earth pageants, and I would love to attend Miss International just so I could complete my mission of attending all big four pageants in person. Besides, I've never been to Japan before, so I think it should be fun. And there you have it, my review of the Miss International 2019 pageant. Do you agree or disagree? Comment below. If you like this video, please like and share. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell below to receive instant notification for the next video. A big thank you to all our new subscribers for helping to make this channel grow. We are getting closer to the 2000 mark. Woohoo! Thank you for watching, guys. Until the next time. Bye!